I'm not a morning person. Dedicated to being passionate about it. Bodybuilders have become more lazy. People have always thought I lift fake weights. Iran and the United States. You take, you take responsibility for that. You know uh, a question we get sent a lot, and I think a lot of people want to know, um, what is the secret to, if you want to bulk up, you want to you want, you want to have the frame on you, but you still want to maintain your shredded abs, what's the secret to like bulking but uh, but not getting too fat? What's the, you know what I'm saying? How do you do that? Yeah, I think it's it's not it's not bulking. Bulking, it's like a depending. Some people think about bulking. Oh, I gotta up my face and just get as big as possible, right? You gotta get fat if you do that. I'm gonna get fat if I do that. Like for for real, some people have good genetics, but me, I, if I eat whatever I want, like I tried to do that kind of with like uh, when I went to 3:30, and. Uh, I was eating a lot of clean food though. It wasn't junk, but I would add some junk over it. It wasn't a good look, I think. It looked like a big ogre. It's like it's not. I had abs because of my genetics, but my back was like you could take my love handles. Like oh, there's a lot of love there, you know. So uh, yeah, I don't think bulking is the right way of seeing it. It's like I think because um, right now what, with my coach we're gonna do like uh, we're gonna add some muscle for the Olympia, but we're gonna use carb rotation and super high days with it. So I think you need to get your body at a good pace where you digest food really well, because it's all about digestion. If if you don't digest, you're gonna food's gonna sit there. You you're not gonna gain the muscle. You're gonna have a bloated waist. It's not good. You have a good digestion. You figure out your food, figure out your digestion, and then you start feeding them. If you start uh, feeding the, the the body, and then you're gonna be always a little bit hungry. If you have the hunger and the food gets digested really good, you can start. Adding food and your metabolism goes up, and you do carb rotation. And I think uh, a lot. Of, if you do like, uh, if you're not hungry, if you eat, a, you ate your food. If you do a, a walk after your meal, like 10 minute walk, the strong men people do that to keep their appetites up. You walk 10 minutes outside on a treadmill, you're gonna get an appetite. So you gotta keep your appetite up. If you cut your appetite, you won't be able to eat to gain muscle. It's gonna be all weird. You're gonna f- hate food and. You know, and I I did do force feeding when I did my bulk to like 3:30. Let's say call it bulk, but you know I would never do that again. I, I would never do that again. So the thing you gotta do if you wanna stay lean is just keep your metabolism really high, and then use super high days, and then cheat meals to like fill fill back up. So you uh, you get a little boost, but then you go back to your uh, base diet, little boost, and then you try to see like a you play with that and you see if you can gain. If you lose, and then if you have like a body fat, you gotta either increase your cardio, or sometimes because people they add sugar, they add sugar in the diet. Like too many sugar is gonna get you fat, and um, and also if you eat a lot of fats, it's gonna slow down your digestion. So me, I like it better low to moderate fat, high carbs, low sugar, and medium protein is pretty much what I've been doing. And then we rotate the carbs. So. Yeah, if you want abs and you know you want to bulk up at the same time, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You know, if you haven't figured it out, DM me because you know it's it's always a give and take. Because to to gain weight, you have to eat more than you burn. To lose weight and have ripped abs, you gotta burn more than you eat. It's counterproductive. So you gotta find a balance, like pretty much your your maintenance weight, and then you with training and food, you gotta build your body. And then high days, you jack up your full nest a little bit, and then you go back to like, uh, you know. It's a constant, but if you just, it's a constant thing you have to kind of monitor, right? Constant. Because I, I think the time where I gain the most muscle and I look my best is when I do carb rotations when I prep. And then and then I can really see the new size where you stop prepping and you actually add more food and a few cheat meals. You're like, oh, shit, yes, I'm, I'm way bigger than when I was, because uh, I was 268 this morning, I said when I was 275 yesterday. The 275 yesterday, compared to the 275 before the prep, I mean, I'm way bigger now. Of course, there's more things involved, as we know. You know, in the pro level, you kind of have to take some stuff and and, uh, and stuff. But, yeah, so there's that involved also. But with that, people also, if they think, like, bulk more is better, they're going to f*** their health. So that's another thing, you know. I want to ask you something because um, you, you know you got a drug addiction. So I want to get your opinion on marijuana in bodybuilding lifestyle. Is yeah. marijuana anything acceptable in bodybuilding lifestyle uh, for appetite for different reasons? But do you think it's one can go with the other, or do you think it's 
people should not do that. Well, in, in Canada, it's legal. And uh, also, it's a natural plant. It's just the smoke might be bad for the lungs, but if you like get yeah, two edibles to sleep, uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's I don't think it's bad for you. But the thing is, like, if you're addicted to it and it's ruining your life, it's making you lazy. Yeah, it is bad for you. If it's making you lazy, it makes your training like sloppy and just slow, and you don't have to drive to do anything. Yeah, if you if you did if you can't stop, you're addicted to weed. Yeah, you're addicted. You're a weed junkie, I guess. But if you're um, just somebody who like takes edibles or 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 vape to sleep or something, and you wake up, you feel like energized, or and then you do your day, and then you sleep again at night, like and everything is perfect in your life. I don't think it's a problem. I did hear that it can increase estrogen. I'm not sure if it's true or not. Yeah, I heard that, you know, but I don't know if it's true. I just heard that sometimes it can happen. So it depends, you know, like, I don't think it's bad. Personally, for me, it's like, you know what? If it's your it's your own body, you're a grown man, you can do whatever. But then again, if you're suffering and you can't stop, then it becomes a problem, right? So I think people can do whatever they want as far as drugs, if you're not hurting anybody else and you're not suffering, you know, it's okay. But then if you can't, if you're suffering and you can't stop, then it becomes a real problem. It all comes down to your personal genetics and how your body reacts to things. That's what I really realize, you know, in life. Yeah, but for weed, like you said, uh, I think it's such a mild thing. The only thing that I've seen a lot, it makes people lazy. So if you're, if you're, the thing is because kids will smoke weed, your brain is not developed until you're 25. So if you if you take all this drug in your brain, it's going to, it might hurt your development. You might become lazy forever. I don't know. So it's like uh, the best scenario for drugs, like don't do anything until you're 25 and be reasonable. <laughs> but it's like kind of hard to do, right?